In 1998, a big-budget Hollywood remake of Godzilla was released in the theaters, and with it came a giant amount of criticism and complaints leveled at how this Godzilla somehow treated the original Godzilla negatively, and that it was not only a terrible Godzilla movie, but also a terrible movie in general. Well, since then, several newer Godzilla movies have been released, and with them, similar issues have risen up when it comes to Godzilla being radically redesigned and put into plots and stories that are not only goofy, but downright horrible. In this video, I want to look back at the Godzilla from 1998 and help explain to others why this film seems to have endured. Sure, it's not the greatest movie ever made, and no one has ever really said that, but I do think that there is something special about it that I think needs discussed. So I've brought my friend Yaroslav on to help dive into what makes the 1998 creature and film so unique and interesting when compared to all of the rest. This is why we think the Hollywood version of Godzilla from 1998 is an underrated film worth any monster fans time. So with the 1998 Godzilla movie, we have a lot of different things compared to the original versions of Godzilla. For example, this movie's taking itself a little more seriously in terms of realism with the design of the monster, what happens to it at the end of the movie, how it can reproduce, and basically how it moves and and looks up on the big screen these are all things that have been pointed out as being bad by godzilla fans of the past especially by a lot of the people that watched the movie in 1998 that were super fans of the older godzilla movies but i personally and i know you agree think that the reason this godzilla is underrated and the reason it has an object you can measure this it is objectively true that there is a giant following of godzilla fans for this specific design, movie, creature, etc. Um, and we want to go into detail for why that is. And I personally think a lot of the reasons people complain about this movie are why people like you and me really like it. Yeah, part of the reason why uh, I know that there's a, you know, there's more of a following than people think is because uh, <laughs> I'm running a uh, pretty well-known fan account on Instagram that's dedicated to celebrating that film and the uh, design choices. And uh, slowly people have been coming out of the woodwork and, uh, you know, showing their appreciation for that. You know, not just the design, but I think the film itself and a lot of the choices and uh, made some good friends. Uh, you know, people are, are, I wasn't really expecting uh, this kind of turnout, honestly. I just kind of want to do it for myself and my other friend, uh, David uh, Spada, who's a, uh, he's a, or excuse me, Spada. Uh, he's another big fan time uh, Godzilla fan and uh, you know we've had a long history uh, talking about this movie and uh, it's part of the reason how you and I actually uh, got closer as friends because um, you know you've told me that you actually enjoyed the film and we got to talk about that in private so yeah mm -hmm. there, there's a lot to um, there's a lot to appreciate in this film and you know we'll get into that in terms of like just the era when the movie came out and stuff like that oh yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> but, you know, I wanted you on here because you've worked in, you know, special effects, dinosaurs in general. You you, you actually have also worked on the new Jurassic World movies, mm -hmm. uh, specifically with like the viral marketing websites and a lot of the artwork for them. But one of the things that I don't think people are going to know until right now is that you're such a big fan of Godzilla and creature design in general. You've got like an actual replica of this thing that I, you painted it, right? The Godzilla yes. or whatever. Uh, well, so this is uh, as close as you can get to uh, like a one-to-one -one sculpt of the, the design that Patrick Tatopolo and his team did, which uh, I'll plug in. Uh, it's done by Galileo Hernandez, a uh, very talented sculptor. And um, I kind of helped, um, you know, he had a pretty good model where, you know, when he showed me it, it was, Pretty close, but I helped kind of direct a couple um, details here and there just to get it as close as we can get it. And then, yeah, I, I assembled the model and painted it as close as I can. And there's some interesting stories behind that as well that I can talk about later on as well. But, you know, you wouldn't do that if you didn't oh, think no. it looked good, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's I, the whole point. This, like, um, you know, uh, the 90s, you know, we have some stuff. Not that recent, but like I'll say, like maybe mid two thousands, that we've had some r pretty good creature designs. But like the nineties hmm. was, you know, it was a treasure trove of creature design. You know, it's 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 so fun to look back on that decade because you can tell like technology was advancing to the degree where like these artists that were kind of 
you know, limited to, you know, a certain、um, technique for, you know, up until like the 80s. They were starting to really explore、um, different things with like practical effects and, and just kind of really exploding with creativity. And like this Godzilla is, you know, I know I might sound biased because a lot of people know me, know I love this Godzilla, but it's really, in my opinion, the best design, best looking Godzilla because they, like the people behind,、um, you know, in Patrick Tatopoulos'、uh, studio, no, he's the guy who created the, the concept of this look. But you had really talented guys like Gino Acevedo,、uh, Lee Joyner,、um, Jose Fernandez. Like, these are like really big.、Uh, Steve Wang. You know, these guys are、uh, big names behind a lot of、um, the movies and characters that you、um, like, like Jurassic Park and,、uh, you know, The Relic.、Um, Tim Gore is another big guy as well who worked on the film. But it's a very complicated. Paint scheme. I'll, I'll say that. Like, it was really, really tough to,、uh, <laughs> to nail the color scheme, which I, you know, it's, it's amazing just for that reason. You know, like, you don't really know exactly what this thing looks like because there's so many fluctuating colors because of the pearlescent that they used.、Mm-hmm. And it's a great reference. They had, like,、um, they used a sailfin lizard and,、um, a, like, water dragons, so many different, like, iguanas for references. But yeah, I can go on for hours about that. <laughs> well, you know, this is what's so cool about it, though, man, is for 1998 and 1997 when they were making this movie, this movie really was a modern, grounded, well done re look at Godzilla. And I mean, Godzilla had stayed relatively the same since 1954. They had updated the suit in various different times to be like more of a frog or more menacing or more <laughs> stupid or whatever. But like, If you look at Godzilla in 1954, it's just a big dinosaur with plates on his back. A lot of people said it's like a T Rex meets a Stegosaurus, breeds fire. And、uh, it's, it's ironic that a lot of the rules in the original Godzilla movie, a lot of how the plot actually plays out, are in this remake. And it's also ironic that this movie, I know it deviates from the initial characters and story in the 54 original, but. It really is a 90s version. I think it respected、mm-hmm. the source material. I think it created an incredibly modern and good looking animal that a lot of fans to this day say, hey, this is Godzilla for the Jurassic Park、mm-hmm. generation, which is us. So it did a really good job, in my opinion. I mean, you look at the 1954 movie, they kill Godzilla after somebody is told, hey, don't let anybody know about this secret I have because we're trying to defeat.、Uh, You know, there's another group of people trying to defeat Godzilla.、Mm-hmm. And they rat him out. They end up killing Godzilla with the military. The same exact thing happens in the 1998 <laughs> movie.、Um, so I don't, I've, never, I, I've never liked the idea that you know, we can say, oh, Godzilla shouldn't be killed by the military. That breaks the rules. It's like maybe you don't want him to be killed by jets, which is、sure. what he gets killed by in the movie. But on top of that, this is a movie that's trying to ground itself into reality. And it's personally. Of course, we know a gigantic monster that size won't exist in the real world, but everything they do from the way that、uh, the animal dives into、mm-hmm. the water, which is actually yeah, my favorite、yeah. scene in the whole movie, it looks just like an iguana.、Mm-hmm. And just, like the movement that they put into this thing, the design of making it an, a living animal like Jurassic Park creatures went a really long way. And I know that the movie got really ripped to shreds when it came out, but it has persisted and been. You know, attracted this following because of things like this. And Godzilla, you've already described the color scheme and everything and the plates on his back, but I personally think, and I, I hate the idea of people calling this thing Zilla, by the way. Oh、it's、my so, gosh, yes. It, it's, it's so insulting to like all the work they did on this. This is Godzilla, dude. This is Godzilla from 1998,、yeah, exactly. the movie that came、yeah. out when I grew up, and I thought it was freaking cool. Like, and, and don't get it twisted. I don't think this is like. The greatest movie ever made. However, this、no, movie、yeah. is definitely not one of the worst Godzilla movies. Come on, I've seen them all. Y'all are lying. Yeah,、yourselves. yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's that、uh, the rose tinted,、uh, you know, the lens on, on how you look at things. And I guess you can say the same for us in this movie、uh, as we defend it, but you can't really deny it. I mean, this was a. I mean, there's so much to talk about here, man. Now it's starting flooding. <laughs> but、uh, this was like, this was a big. Big event in the late、yeah. 90s. This was 
contending with Spielberg's Jurassic Park franchise. These were the guys. Yeah, it was. These were the guys that right after you Lost World. Day. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right too. And Independence Day was a gigantic hit as well. And a lot of people wanted to see them do Godzilla, and they pretty much. Did. Oh, you talked about creature design. The aliens in Independence Day are a great oh, example absolutely. of like. 1990s monsters mm -hmm. brought to life in a very modern way and uh, I, I know that a lot of people don't like Jar Jar Binks from The Phantom Menace but if you look at the creatures that are in that movie on Naboo like the big mm -hmm. dinosaurs with the shield generators on their backs and yeah. the little dinosaurs that they ride that's that's 90s creature design man that's yeah. cool like yeah, yeah. really uh, different from the 80s and even the, the 2000s Godzilla fits in perfectly mm -hmm. there and even the origin of Godzilla, where instead of just being this, you know, whatever creature that's not, it's been defined in some Godzilla movies as what it was like. They call it a Godzilla source. You're right. Um, you're right. But but uh, this movie, just taking an iguana and pinning down the movements and even down to eating the fish, it, it's really. I, I think this movie went a long way to actually garner. It, it makes sense why we like this movie, Yaroslav. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, I, like you can see there was, I don't know if there's a competitive edge, it might have been, but between Centropolis Studios, which is like Roland Emmerich and um, uh, the visual effects supervisor Volker Engel, close friends, I think they both uh, are from Germany, um, this uh, German descent, but uh, anyway, they both wanted to, uh, it seemed like they really wanted to contend with the naturalistic representation that Spielberg was bringing the Jurassic films you know just kind of right. ground it in that way and make this creature feel tangible even as fantastic as it is you know it's like a 200 foot tall um, radioactive iguana but like you know that's just it. it's like um, they really try to enrich in like the world like you know ground it like have you uh, feel uh relatable to like the characters even though i i know there's a lot of criticism around the human characters but you know they feel like new yorkers you know it's it is what it is you mm -hmm. know and just for you to feel relatable to them and then this is the situation that they're dealing with and this is the real world you know this like larger in life like unbelievable animal exists and like how does this how does the world deal with that and it's like you know another thing too is like uh, concept that Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich wanted to uh, bring back with this Godzilla was just the, um, the ambiguity around it you know just like how evasive the creature is it's hard to get a glimpse of it which was in my opinion that was some of the best stuff that they did with this film and even with marketing it was it really yeah. had you excited <laughs> to like just get a glimpse of this thing like what does this look like it's so huge but we can't see it like it's like an oxymoron you know it's like like it that was very genius and it was anticipating um you know viewers and i love that stuff especially like maybe you'll agree um probably my favorite sequence of the whole film is just the the grand entrance that godzilla has in at uh the fish market you know it's just oh yeah that's that a whole great build up is because... amazing yeah yeah, when you, uh, I mean, of course, and we acknowledge some of the human stuff is a little odd, like the guy just kind of waiting there for the big uh, <laughs> Godzilla wave to like get him. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but you know, it really, it's pretty expert. It's expertly done to where you see the cars go on the overpass mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you see a tail and then you mm -hmm. see the spikes and you see, holy shit, there's a fucking boat on top of the spikes and stuff's falling yeah. from his body. Yeah. The foot go up. It, that's it's really a mount, cool, a mountain man. rising it's it's so yeah it, visually impactful yeah it, it, that was like i get chills every time and when i was saying like it's hard to like understand like for me for the longest time until recently um and i do have uh this uh japanese um well it's, it has japanese translation but it's an art book um forwarded by patrick Tatopolo. uh very good book this is called the art of godzilla and uh, it goes really in depth with all the practical effects. I think there's a little bit of the CG that Volker Angle did with his team, but it's more on the like, it's like a Stan Winston behind the scenes look. And it's so much work. Cool. Yeah, it's so much work that went behind it. But like, I don't know about you, Clayton, but like, 
growing up watching this movie, I love the design, but like a lot of like I personally didn't really understand exactly what this Godzilla looked like because uh, the toys and the promotional like artwork and stuff, like those guys didn't even know themselves what Godzilla looked like because they were keeping it so secret and I think there was very controversial behind the studios like they were trying to like figure out this was like the best direction to go because it was so radically different it was a right, very yeah. interesting production and oh yeah, yeah I can remember before the movie came out um, and very little because we, we were pretty young when this movie came out but like I do remember all the marketing was basically just the green text it, you mm-hmm. know, and all the toys too. I think the only thing they really had available when you were a kid trying to buy Godzilla stuff was like, maybe you'd get that eye, you but you, right. you didn't really get to see the full body until you saw right, the movie. Right. Um, and, and a really cool thing about that too, like you said, they kind of hit it and it was cool. To, it was like a mystery being uncovered when you watch the movie. Right. But on top of that, we got to talk about the baby Godzillas mm-hmm. that are in this movie, which have been compared and rightfully so to the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park and the Lost right. World. But we have two designs in this movie, basically adults and small ones. And I actually think that this is the only time a Godzilla movie has ever accurately explained where the son of Godzilla came from. And it's grounded again with Parthenogenesis. Right. It makes sense. It's cool. And the whole section and the design of the animals and the eggs and uh This movie is very 90s. This movie had a lot of work go into creature design that got a lot of flack. And quite honestly, that's why I love this movie is because it is not the worst film ever made. You're never going to hear me say it's one of the greatest movies ever made, but one of the greatest and most original Godzilla movies. Dude, this is a contender. And I know that people are going to get crazy upset over that. I mean... Look, I've, I've also praised like Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out yeah. Attack, and yeah. I'm a big fan of The Return of Godzilla. Uh, but this movie is a very well done exercise in awesome, groundbreaking creature design, uh, just groundbreaking rules for your monster to live in in the real world. And quite frankly, I'll be honest with you, this is the most true example of like a good follow up to the original Godzilla movie mm-hmm. that never. Uh, got stupid. I mean, I know there's stupid stuff in this movie, but when I say stupid, you know what I mean. Yeah. If you're a Godzilla fan, you damn well know what I mean when I say stupid. <laughs> I mean that campy, over the top, dumb shit that yeah. they put in movies like Godzilla: The Revenge, Godzilla vs. Megalon, all that. And look, yeah. there's campy stuff in this movie, but it's campy for the '90s. It's modern. I mean, yeah, and it's campy I, between the human characters. It's not like it's yeah, not like Godzilla yeah. sliding on his tail or doing a dance. You know, yeah. you know, but uh, but actually, uh, on that though, if you really want to hate this Godzilla for that, I don't think you can because there are moments where Godzilla and Volker Engel and Roland Emmerich, they, you know, there's a comment that they made uh, where they wanted to uh, present Godzilla as like a thinking creature, which makes it that much more uh, unsettling, you know, because. Uh, you know, Godzilla does like, you know, there's pauses that he, you know, you can see that Godzilla's thinking, you know, um, whether it be um, like that shot when they're on the taxi cab and, you know, they're constantly like going through his legs and stuff. And Godzilla's like, oh, you know, it, you know, that's a little bit, uh, I feel like a little touch of that campiness. It's fun. It's not overly campy, but like you can see like they're playing fun, like with a cat. I mean, they've done that in Jurassic Park movies sure, as well, sure. like the Dilophosaurus with Dennis Nedry or. You know, something like exactly. it's not it's not unknown, but um, one of the things that I also think makes this movie underrated is the fact that comparatively to other Godzilla movies at the time and even today, uh, with the exception of maybe the 2014 American movie or even Shin Godzilla, this Godzilla takes itself. It's not 100 percent serious, but the way it grounds everything in a uh a more naturalistic way and animalistic way i should say i i really do appreciate i mean even the, there's a lot of controversy over the scene where he turns around and roars and like that's what causes stuff to like blow up or whatever we, we don't really get atomic fire breath in the movie but i'm kind of glad that we don't get atomic oh. fire breath in the movie 
uh, I like that he digs everywhere. I like that he gets to actually evade heat seekers or missiles in general, and they blow up buildings yeah, behind yeah, him. Yeah. There's there's a lot of stuff about this movie beyond just creature design that I think warrants its just a second viewing. Maybe if you've never, and again, like I'm not telling you this is one of the greatest movies ever made. No, one of the greatest Godzilla movies ever made. Yeah, I think this movie is better than God's Looking at the Monsters, which was oh, another yeah, American movie. Yeah, yeah. What would you would you agree with me uh, on that? Or? Yeah, like a million percent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No offense to um, people that like that movie, but you know what I mean. Well, yeah. I also think this is a better movie than uh, Godzilla 2000, which mm. uh, I was so excited to see a couple of years later. My dad was excited mm-hmm. to see it too because he liked this movie. And then he got to the theater and we realized that like it was in Japanese and... It was dubbed, dubbed and yeah. my dad fell asleep. He was like, I thought this was Godzilla 2. My dumb ass thought it was literally the 2000 well, Godzilla movie. Well, I was like, I, I, damn, I missed a it, lot of them. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, that movie was the first follow-up to, you know, Japan, like Toho, um, mm-hmm. bringing back their Godzilla. And it's interesting because that was, you know, that was um, released in the U.S., you know, theaters through Sony, which... Yeah. You know, they own the rights to uh, Godzilla 98, obviously, they produced it, but, um, yeah, they use, like, I'm sure you remember this, they use, like, some of the Godzilla 98 sound design in, in Godzilla 2000, because I'm yeah. wondering if that was just, like, a bleed over of, maybe they were still kind of having hope for the for the 98 Godzilla franchise to continue, I don't know, but um, that's an, I mean, speaking on that uh do you mind if we talk about like sound design and stuff like that too yeah and it's very different from you know what you would consider to be initial stereotypical godzilla sound design right, right. I, I actually really like uh, the more elephantine mm-hmm. roar that they give him but i actually also like the little got the little godzilla raptors have some pretty cool sound design yeah too. oh yeah they it's funny because uh sometimes they sound like aliens you know, yes, they do. It's fitting because they're like a swarm. So you get a lot of really fun uh, genre types, or you know, uh, callbacks to like uh, cult classics in this movie. Um, it, but like, yeah, man, the sound. I this, you know, again, I sound biased, but whatever. You know, like I feel like this movie has the best Godzilla sound design because it it feels like a modern but cool like reinvention of Godzilla's right like especially the scream one when mm. it, like he has um he's got the low bellowing bellowing one I'm not going to try to imitate him but uh <laughs> he's got that one which they're both very different from each other but they're also very different from the original but they all end with that like that the tra- the, the last reverb or whatever of like the classic kind of Godzilla right. the staple sound and I gotta say with the legendary films like the new Godzilla I'm just it's fine for what it is but like it's overused and it's just one it's that I like to refer to it as like the wheezing Godzilla because it's just like <laughs> you know it's just like it doesn't yeah, feel yeah, as yeah. powerful and like it doesn't feel like it's coming from like the depths of his you know like the uh, he's not like bellowing to me you know which is why I like the Godzilla 98 sound like just felt so organic and it's honestly scary just even the um the 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 um reoccurring uh sound waves like you know it's it's like very like well oh, yeah like, yeah my god yeah. it's spooky and when you hear that comment you know godzilla's around it's almost like jaws with like the yeah cue. that's a good comparison because Again, in treating this animal like it's an animal and not like this supernatural creature from, you know, somewhere mm-hmm. else, they they do ground it in that more Jurassic Park sort of uh, sound design. Where Like the Velociraptors are a great example. Right. That's such a an unreal, spooky scream to hear from a creature mm-hmm. that you wouldn't expect. And, and they kind of do the same thing with Godzilla. One thing that I really think makes this movie cool is the idea of uh, a creature that can be killed that comes out of nowhere from like this nuclear test stuff and a creature that is actually faked out to die around the torpedo mm-hmm. uh, scenes and stuff like that and then we go on to this other subplot where we're going to kill the babies and then we get him back at the end and the way they and I know this is a criticism a lot of people have for the movie but the way they kill Godzilla 
is actually, it, again, it reaffirms that kind of grounded reality that they've set it in. Sure. It's not 100% real, but getting caught up in, in uh, the cables and everything, and even the noises it makes when it's getting hit, mm. when it's getting hurt, mm. are... Uh, they're they're a little sad. It, yeah. That's another thing about this movie is to watch Godzilla die at the end. It's it's kind of upsetting because it's not a monster. It's not a villain. It's not evil. Um, it's just an animal, right. and it's just doing animal things. It's ex- exactly what uh, Nick Atapu says in the beginning of the film. You know, he's, he's not trying to uh, harm. He's just you know he's just an animal. And um, yeah, it's a good point because you know the legendary like Godzilla, uh, King of the Monsters. You know, like there's like that sentimental moment where he's with Sarazawa and like he, you know, that Nathan did yeah. to recharge Godzilla. But like, I, that was a little more human though. That was a little more of a, uh, which is not a bad thing. I like right. I like that scene a lot. It's probably the best scene in the movie. Oh, but yeah, yeah. That Godzilla is nowhere near as grounded as uh, oh that that whole world is i think it comes down to the world uh honestly because like all the 90s films it's very interesting because you mentioned this earlier like the stories always felt like okay we need to treat like these characters that we're adapting in films they need to be in our world we need to make them feel like they exist which right. in a lot of newer movies, it's like that's kind of you know I guess that's already been done. So it's like that's out the window. It's like let's just make a uh, like a more faithful uh, retelling of like the very um, outlandish stories of you know these characters. Like you know the new Godzillas, you, you have like magic and stuff now with, with mm-hmm. Mothra, which is fine. You know that's going back to like the that's more uh, um, faithful to like. You know, like show the show like, series, yeah, show like. which is which is fine because it's what they're going for. But, um, but yeah, you know, with uh, that that era in general, the 1990s. Even if you look at something like, I'll throw a curveball at you, man. Like Small Soldiers, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Small Soldiers is a silly movie, but Small Soldiers was grounded enough to be like, no, there's a micro trip that goes in the action figures that makes them, you know, like sentient, and they're it's scary. About this war, <laughs> so yeah. it's enough, and, and like. Uh, another great example is Spider-Man. Like mm-hmm. I've talked to Jacob from Dangerville about this, and mm-hmm. the new Tom Holland Spider-Man is nowhere near as plucked from reality as Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, or even the Green Goblin. That part where he takes off his mask, like the Goblin killed, I had nothing yeah, to do yeah. with. Like yeah, that's like that feels like a real person. Yeah, no, for sure, and it's all militaristic. Um, and uh, I'll just plug this in here as well, but. I mean, we can do another video down the road if you like, but uh, the Hulk, you compare oh, that, yeah. compare like uh, yeah. Mark Ruffles. I mean, I like I like what they did with Mark Ruffles' Hulk because it's different versions I wanted to see, but the 2003 Hulk is what I'm talking about here. Um, yeah, that, that is like, it is very uh, gritty, grounded. As, as cartoony as some of the frames might look, that's what makes that movie more interesting because it just jumps up. But you know what? That's, that's a great comparison with Godzilla because... Hulk Mm -hmm. took a campy concept, a concept that doesn't make any sense on paper. It's a comic book. It's like a guy turns giant Mm -hmm. and green from radiation. But that movie grounded it enough while still being faithful to the idea that it was a comic book because they had those panel transitions and everything. But that movie had a weight to it that... Uh, and uh, it's a lot of things that go into that. It's creature design with the dogs and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's the weight of the drama behind Nick Nolte's character and his relationship with Hulk, mm-hmm. but also down to the music that Danny Elfman mm-hmm. made. And speaking of music, Godzilla from 1998, oh incredible soundtrack Absolutely. that is really memorable to this day, uh, especially for people like us who are from the specifically Lost World mm-hmm. era. Like, I think that's what we are in terms of like movie fans uh, late yeah. 90s particularly <laughs> yeah, yeah. but dude the music for godzilla is is it's pretty awesome oh dude it's it's uh, one of my top scores i mean uh that theme is really creepy and um but there's also like really good like patriotic like uplifting oh yeah cool, you know kind of you know it's the same composer uh, david arnold that did uh independence day like the same team pretty much did godzilla and you know it's he did such a great like that's the most uh like patriotic movie independence day in my opinion but, but yeah. uh yeah they he brings a little bit of that in godzilla as well which works for like the you know like the humans versus godzilla which is interesting because 
the score kind of tells two different stories. You know, it's like very dark, uh, brooding, mysterious, yeah, mysterious uh, Godzilla side, and then there's like the humans prevailing and the spirit of the humans trying to figure out this problem that they have. Uh, but yeah, that score is just um, just the best. I mean, it's it's up there with Ifukube's. Uh, uh, Godzilla theme, you know. <laughs> it, it, well, it's also very of its time, which was what makes it so cool. Like, if you if you look at Godzilla as just a movie, and um, you know nothing more, like it's not connected to the original Godzilla. I think it's a fine movie. Yeah. Uh, with really really cool creature design. Now, if you look at Godzilla 1998 as a remake of older Godzilla material, I really do want to throw these arguments back into the people that hate this movie's face because, like genuinely everything they complain about is what makes this movie special to people like you and me and the way they complained about it i think ironically reinforced the movie's strengths more animalistic nature where did godzilla jr come from how they kill the guy at the end being grounded having an actual world that not only makes sense for this movie, but makes more sense for Godzilla and what had become incredibly campy and silly in the Showa era. And while I am a giant fan of the Heisei Godzilla movies, mm-hmm. I, I don't think that any of the arguments that have been thrown at this movie as a Godzilla film, they don't work. Like, yeah, you can have your preference and that's fine, but I think to call the movie horrible because Jets killed Godzilla or because uh, Godzilla looks like an iguana, uh, come on, man. Shin Godzilla looked nothing like Godzilla. Uh, I know. <laughs> like, that was actually it looked like a giant scary Muppet. But uh, Well, even that movie deviated even heavier from the source material because it had lasers coming out of its back. And the tail. It had like a tadpole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, remember the tadpole-like form? Which, yeah. I like that movie. Oh, yeah, but yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do think that the... The, the the reason this movie's underrated is because everything that they threw at it in terms of why it's wrong and not Godzilla are why people liked it like you and me are like, no, 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 that that is Godzilla. Not Zilla. That's Godzilla. Yeah, ex- Godzilla 1998. Exactly. Motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's just what it is. And, and, and uh, it, it is funny because uh, th- you do have all these radically different versions of Godzilla now like we've had um, legendary kind of try to stay close to the design is which is funny because in the legendary design you can see some influence from taken from uh, the Godzilla 98 design well even the story the 2014 movie referenced right. it with the destruction of the it, eggs yeah. and then also that uh, the helicopter going over the jungle and everything but look uh, you talk about different Godzillas man didn't they make an anime Godzilla where it's like a, a living Mountain. tree beard yeah like, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I mean. Which that, to be fair, got panned. But um, that's still like uh, the Japanese trying to play with different. Innovate, yeah, and think? that's what everyone's doing. You know, everyone's trying to innovate, and that's all. God- Godzilla ninety eight was just ahead of the curve. You're like, look, if we get to do this, and this is like Patrick Tatopolo and Roland Emmerich saying this, like, we want this Godzilla to be fast. We want him to kind of really embody like the 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 spirit that. Um, that um, oh my gosh, um, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the creator's name. Wow, this is embarrassing. The, the director Ishiro yeah, Honda. Yeah, Ishiro Honda. Yes, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, his uh, the mythology of Godzilla that he was trying to tell. It you know, like the the, the whole lead up to Godzilla in that '54 film was just like you didn't see him until he was there. Like he just came in like in a hurricane. And no one even right, got to yeah. get a glimpse of this thing. So they're like, "Yeah, we want Godzilla to be swift and dangerous, and um, you barely barely get a glimpse of him." So like they kind of retrofitted the design to fit those like mythologies, which was interesting. But yeah, like then you got like newer versions, like the uh, Singular Point Godzilla, which you know it still looks like Godzilla, but he's got like this uh, Oni look to him. He's got like that mm-hmm. demon teeth. Which is cool, and then like, uh, like you said, Godzilla Resurgence is so radically different. But like, that's a right. that's the fun of Godzilla. Like, I mean, he always looked different throughout the film. So I don't understand the the backlash on the '98 Godzilla. Like, look, when they designed this, Jurassic Park was establishing the, the oh, new yeah. form for bipedal theropods. Like, this is new science that they're establishing. So it's like it only makes sense for Godzilla, who is like modeled after a, a T Rex 
from the understanding that they had in the 50s to just update it to like a oh, modern that's a great race. point yeah yeah that's all it was that's a really great point right but and i yeah. I, I actually that's again it's one of the reasons why i think this movie is so underrated it just comes back to a really cool looking creature like in terms of 1990s dinosaurs or animals, I mean, that I consider to be some of the coolest uh, meat eaters or like aggressive mm -hmm. theropods, you got the uh, Jurassic Park T-Rex, you've got the Velociraptor, mm -hmm. and then you really just you got Godzilla. Like Godzilla is, a, and you know, it's funny, there's so many mods for stuff like Ark Survival Evolved or other games mm -hmm. where they put Godzilla in that game. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and it's this Godzilla, man. It's a... Uh, it's gone on to, in my opinion, evoke a really cool legacy. I would not be shocked if uh, when Colin Trevorrow was working on the Indominus Rex, if this Godzilla <laughs> was not at some point a uh, inspiration for even right. just color. Uh, right. This this is a really underrated monster design, I think. And, and neither of us are saying, and I, we want to get this straight, like we're not saying this is Schindler's List in terms of like <laughs> film quality. Yeah. And I know that some people are going to try to twist it that way. However, if you really think this is the worst Godzilla movie because he looks different and got killed by the military, bro, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's not a fair argument because it's, no. uh, you're kind of contradicting. But uh, yeah, man, this, um, you know, this Godzilla movie, um, it, it's fun, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I know that there are some uh, struggles in the production because of, you know, the direction they were taking the character, but I mean, the, you know, I know Roland Emmerich wanted to direct uh, a little uh, asteroid movie, he said, as he puts it, which is funny because he, ha he had in the same year uh, Deep Impact and uh, <laughs> Armageddon. And he wanted to direct one, but they're like, no, let's get you to do Godzilla because you did such a good job with like the popcorn blockbuster vibe oh, sure. of Independence yeah. Day. So like you got that in this movie. The characters like alone, like I love John Reno's uh, Philippe Roach. Such oh, a great yeah, he's character. awesome. He's the Roland Timbo of yeah, Godzilla. He's so cool and so chill, but he's just the guy that knows how to start a car with a knife. And you're like, all right, uh, I'm going to just listen to him. And he had fun supporting characters like Hank Azaria's... Um, animal you know victor with the great scene that everybody remembers yeah. where the, he survives after being yeah. uh, stepped on which is still that is good humor man oh, that absolutely. godzilla has a good sense of humor about uh stuff like that happening in the movie mm -hmm. particularly with uh, i mean you mentioned animal there's a scene later on where they're actually in madison square garden and they're running away from the little godzillas mm -hmm. and he says ah and audrey's like what <laughs> and I, he says something like, "This is where the Nick showers." Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. That's see, that's um, stuff like that that I, I like. Uh, I guess I call it like interjecting humor, which mm -hmm. which works. And you know, I, I do like. I'm not trying to come off uh, negative when I'm saying this, but like, I do like uh, Jurassic World. But there was a moment with Lowry when he's trying to, you know, trying to interject with like a romantic oh, you, the kiss, yeah the which kiss it, 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 i hate it, that scene too yeah, it just does not land but like you know something it, it, i think it's the pacing like that was just like that's like when they can stop and breathe and he turns around and he says that line and then she's yeah and, i don't and like and it the, either well yeah. yeah uh but i mean like for godzilla 98 like when they just escaped the the godzillas and then like you yeah. know that's like a, a a reliever right there which is fun like it's lightning the move as you're well even even the uh wrong floor scene oh my gosh uh... i laughed at this movie a lot as a kid i left with the movie like this was a on top of it being one of my favorite like uh sci-fi like action movies i i thought it was one of the funniest movies too like uh, you know as a kid all those jokes landed with me which is interesting because like it's it's yeah the funny thing about it too is like I've always described this movie as the San Diego scene from the end of the lost world yeah, yeah. meets an episode of friends. Yeah. And I really do think that's what it is. Like there's a, there's a, some people consider this really bad dialogue, but it's the part where they're in the tunnel and Godzilla's clamoring after them. And he goes, this thing have high beams. It's uh, like, no shit. It has high beams. All cars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, <no>. But like, <laughs> it's a one liner. It's cheesy. It's like, it's, it's just like a 1990s. Uh, it's just like a lost world line. Like follow the screams. Right. Or, uh, exactly. You know, it, and it's, it's a fun, I think that's a really good way to describe this movie is it's just a fun blockbuster. Now, mm -hmm. uh, the marketing, everything that led up to the movie was 
really exciting and the final release got you know kicked and beaten to death mm-hmm. but now here we are how old is this movie this is 23 years old uh let's see 98 yeah it's 23 yeah so um wow yeah that's that's kind of crazy i saw this movie in theaters <laughs> i know i know i mean this was uh lost world was the first movie i saw in theaters and i think after alien resurrection yeah this was the third movie i ever saw in theaters um yeah. but man that was a great time uh, oh it's was so time. fun dude yeah. that the 1990s in general you look at the blockbusters back then and what was modern and cool they try to emulate a lot of it now but jurassic park the lost world space champ godzilla twister. the phantom menace relic all the, yeah twister you know, twister's another uh, one. But, starship uh, troopers yeah. you know like you had starship all troopers. these all these great <laughs> Great stories with, like, uh, adversaries, whether they be, like, organic, you know, like, creatures or just nature. There is really good movies. Like, the blockbuster vibe was thriving, you know? I mm-hmm. mean, I wonder if that's when that blockbuster rental store came out around that time. <laughs> like, oh, we Well, it's definitely store. when they were in, like, peak power because right. we were going there for, like, every Saturday. Right. I remember renting Lake Placid oh, Lake and Placid, seeing the commercial yeah. for... Uh, walking with dinosaurs and, for the and first time <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> oh fight club yeah, too man. that's right um, that's good stuff but yeah uh what a time man mm-hmm. but i think we've talked long enough about godzilla 1998 and given our thoughts on why we think it's underrated uh, any closing arguments yaroslav or what do you think uh i mean we can talk forever i, I wouldn't mind if you want to do uh like a follow-up segment on this in the future but yeah sure but uh yeah no i mean this movie Look, like again, I, I run the uh, Godzilla 1998 unofficial account, uh, which I think might have been one of the first. It's interesting because it was one of the first accounts that actually dedicated itself solely to that movie to celebrate like the pre-production, the release, you know, the premiere, and just everything. Because I wanted to celebrate the 20th anniversary. I was like, no one's gonna do this, you know, like <laughs> like uh, TriStar, Sony, like no one's gonna. It's like me it. doing my. 20th anniversary video for the lost exactly. world back in 2017 i was like i'll be the one to stick up for the lost yeah, world there you go i mean that's that's exactly the thing and like um you know and i see all the comments like everyone's like oh this movie's crap I'm like well then why are you on my page you know like why, why do you see this and like <laughs> and uh they always say oh uh i don't like the movie but the design is good i don't consider it godzilla but like well you know okay that's up to you to decide what you want to do with it it's sure. fair yeah. but like don't discredit them the attempt that the creators made with this you know it, mm-hmm. it, it, too much work went into yeah. it it looks too cool it, and too modern and and it looks way better than shin godzilla or earth godzilla or yeah no exactly <laughs> this if this movie came out today we're talking about uh to compare like this would have been the biggest contender with marvel that's how big this movie was in 1998 like that whole it was hyped up yeah. huge it was it was it, this is i think uh, apart from the Lost World and the Phantom Menace, this was the only other thing I remember getting really big hype because uh, Small Soldiers was hyped for people our age, but n- not the world. Like, right? Um, and I don't really, yeah, I can't. I mean, oh well, I mean Titanic, but come on, Mighty but, Mighty Joe <laughs> Young was I think the same yeah, year. Well, even God's, yeah, but Godzilla was was way more anticipated than Mighty Joe Young. Oh, like, for sure. I mean, that was that yeah. was marketed to the sky you know like and even think about the toys you know um just the same level merch. they wanted to treat this as Jurassic Park's biggest contender like there was so much yes. merch yeah. the toys were like so many toys just like Trend, uh Trend Masters was competing with uh Kenner you know like it was it was pretty outstanding you know and, and it's kind of funny if you remember back in the day at like KB Toys or Kmart's mm-hmm. and stuff where they would have like Lost World Jurassic Park remote control T Rex, and then you'd have like the remote control uh, little Godzilla. Yeah, right next to <laughs> like, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, and what a time to be alive. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was a good time. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Aside from that, you know, um, I'd be happy to talk more about this. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see more people warming up. We're starting to see more, like, surprisingly, starting to see some official, you know, recognition yeah and just you know there's companies that are creating like collectibles for it like small things but it's still official you know license release which um, gives me hope for you know maybe something uh, like a future celebration down the road maybe something for the 25th i have no idea but you know we could try to put something together even if it's unofficial i mean this is pretty fun in my opinion oh absolutely 
it's it's been fun talking to you yeah man, and it's good to talk to another person that likes uh, godzilla 1998 but we've talked long enough guys what do you think about the movie are you a fan of the design do you think a lot of the arguments against it are kind of hypocritical and what do you think this movie is going to be remembered the most for in the future because a lot of people that probably beat the hell out of it back in the day didn't expect it to get this big of a following but hey whatever your own thoughts opinions comments happen to be we'd love to hear them in the comments down below